The Wise Men and the Ancient Prophecy The wise men came from the east to visit young child Jesus, and they worshipped him and also gave him gifts. How did they know that Jesus would be born king? Who told them about the everlasting kingdom of Jesus? We are interested in the source of information which made the, young, the wise men to visit Jerusalem. That is what we are talking about today and we are starting right now. The Bible tells us that these men were the wise men or the magi from the east. Why is this important? This is important because we can search in the Bible for other countries where wise men were mentioned. And also that country must be in the east of Jerusalem or Israel. The Bible says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Matthew 2 verse 1. The nation of Egypt had wise men. Let us see if these ones were the wise men we are talking about. Exodus chapter 7 verse 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. Yes, there were wise men in Egypt, but Egypt is not in the east of Jerusalem, so Egypt doesn't qualify. Do we have another country where wise men were mentioned in the Bible? Oh yes, we have. In the book of Daniel chapter 2 verse 12, it says, For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So there were wise men in Babylon. Now we need to see whether Babylon is in the east of Jerusalem or not. Let us study the map and see. Do you see Babylon, which is today Iraq? It is in the east of Jerusalem. I think we are going somewhere now. If you are not sure, just look at the map again. Now we, we know that Babylon is a better choice, but there are other questions we must ask before we can conclude. How did the wise men of Babylon know about Jesus? Secondly, how did they know the connection between the star and the birth of Jesus? These are serious questions to ask because if their source of information was able to predict the first coming of Jesus, then it can predict the second coming of our Lord Jesus. But to get there, it's a journey. In our previous video, we saw how the wise men visited Jesus when he was still a young child. If you missed that video, click on the banner when it appears so that you can watch that video. If you are interested in videos like this, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel and watch other videos like this one. Moving right along, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For these wise men to travel all the way from Babylon to Israel, which is about 900 miles, it took great faith. That's one reason I don't believe they were pagans, but they were worshippers. Mind you, the journey was also dangerous. It is for this reason I don't, I don't believe they were just three in number. They probably had a troop of soldiers for their protection. You can't embark on such a long journey, just the three of you. It is dangerous. When Ezra spoke about this journey from Babylon to Jerusalem, the Bible says, For on the first day of the first month, he began to go up from Babylonia, and on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, for the good hand of his God was on him. 
Ezra chapter 7 verse 9. This was a five-month journey. Think about that. Imagine traveling that long to see someone. That person must be really special. And of course, Jesus was and is special. Praise God. The wise men saw it fit to travel 900 miles just to see Jesus. The knowledge they had was definitely a revelation in their hearts. 4. These wise men had something which inspired faith in them. What was it? And how did it get to Babylon? The Bible tells us that the children of Israel were sent to Babylon because of their disobedience, and Daniel was among them. Daniel was later chosen to serve in the king's court. The Bible also tells us that Daniel was numbered with the wise men of Babylon. Daniel chapter 2 verse 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Why did they want to kill Daniel? Because Daniel was a wise man also. After Daniel joined the wise men, he began to do well by the grace of God until he was promoted to be the leader of the wise men. Here is a scripture which speaks volumes about what we are talking about. Daniel chapter 2 verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel became chief governor of the wise men in Babylon. The word chief means Daniel was their captain. He was their coach. He was their mentor. He was their, their master, their teacher. Do you understand? This shows that the wise men became Daniel's disciples. Okay. We know that Daniel wrote the book of Daniel where we get powerful prophecies of the end time, including the first coming of the Messiah. Daniel began to teach the wise men these prophecies and talk about the coming king. Daniel was actually doing soul winning in Babylon, winning souls for Jehovah, the God of Israel. You say, how do you know that? Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen. After all, it was Daniel who wrote these words, so he definitely wanted to be among the wise who shine as the brightness of the firmament by winning souls. So Daniel turned many to righteousness. Proverbs was already at Daniel's, Daniel's disposal in the days of Daniel. And Daniel knew that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth soul is wise. From Proverbs 11 verse 30. So Daniel wasn't just going to sit around like a fool. He had to win soul and be wise. No wonder he was greatly loved. So Daniel was winning these wise men to love the God of Israel and the coming Messiah. Faith was stirred in them. I believe that Daniel wrote other books to give them more details. Daniel must have taught them about the star out of Jacob. Numbers 24 verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not, nigh, not nigh. There shall come a star out of, a, of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. The star out of Jacob? Wow! It was no surprise to me at all 
that when they saw the star again, they rejoiced so much. They were told about the star and were expecting it. Matthew 2 verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Hallelujah. The ancient prophecy must have said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God. Now I see why the wise men knelt down and worshipped Jesus. It is because they were told that this one, this child that will be born, will be a mighty God, the everlasting Father. Oh, hallelujah. They believed. They were not pagans. These guys were believers. They were worshippers. Glory to God. At this point in time, I want to just bow down before the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The mighty God, the great I am, the one who was and is and is to come. Won't you just lift your hands and worship the King of Kings, King Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, we worship you, we declare there is none like you. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there was a Lord that... We still needed to cover. But in the next video, we shall continue from where we left off. Until next time, this is Bishop Judah. Dissolving doubts and explaining hard sentences through the word of God. God 